As the obedient remnant people, we know all about the dangers of the AMA vaccines that kill many more people than the disease they claim to fight against. And they do in fact cripple so many children with autism, it's a wonder hundreds of thousands of parents haven't come forward in protest yet. But then this is the age of lying, and so many people actually accept the lies of the government and its media machine as if it's all true. The planned demic fiasco has proven that hands down. But why do you suppose a leader in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, which used to be known for promoting the health message as well as biblical truths regarding the defiling the body with dangerous chemicals like vaccines, why would he suddenly say on camera that vaccines are probably a good thing? Check this out. Yeah, I think by the time they, um, y y when they melt down the ingredients to make a vaccine, these things are so uh, hyper-processed that it's almost yeah. been being boiled down to its, uh, you know, its base yeah. ingredients. And, you know, if the vaccine is going to save people's lives, then uh, it's probably yeah. a good thing. He is saying this because, as we all know, the government is right now pushing a forced vaccine narrative all across this nation. And so, of course, they're going to be demanding their 501c3 pawns help them. Doug Batchelor is pushing the vaccine for the exact same reason Seventh-day Adventist leaders have been declaring Ali is God and homosexual marriage is okay. And they have even declared in writing that having dozens of Sunday-keeping churches under the Seventh-day Adventist name is no big deal because, as we all know, Sunday laws are most assuredly in the pipeline, regardless of what Seventh-day Adventist President Ted Wilson recently said on camera. They're all doing this because they have no choice now. They got caught in open sin when they signed on to that long-prophesied 501c3 contract, and so they have no choice but to stay politically correct, which means to actually preach anti-Christian dogma and bold-faced lies, or they're going to lose their precious filthy lucre by having their contract nullified, which will then result in back taxes, penalty taxes, and excise taxes. They got caught literally signing a contract to join their church with the second beast of Revelation, which then also proved they cannot understand Christian prophecy anymore. I mean, they totally missed a major prophetic event here. For in order to get that contract with the U.S. government, they must first incorporate their church or join their church with the state, which then creates an image of the church and state beast in Rome. As prophesied, they created an image of that beast by yoking with the very government that is soon to persecute and kill Christians that refuse the mark of the beast. Worse yet, because they did so, they had to come up with a way to explain their actions. But there is no way out of this mess except to lie. By their sinful actions, they boldly exposed themselves as the very ones that fulfilled the prophecy regarding the image of the beast and the preachers of filthy lucre in one fell swoop. And so, how far will they go to try and make their flock believe they did no wrong? Notice what Doug Batchelor said in an email to me and another brother in the faith when asked why he had multiple 501c3 contracts with the U.S. government. As you will see in the email, he actually instructed his secretary to say this to people that ask such a question. She said, thank you for writing. When Pastor Doug has been asked about this, he's written, the 501c3 status for a church in no way means that the church has become subservient or accountable to the government instead of God. If the church doesn't have the 501c3 status, then they have the taxable status and would actually be in greater bondage. And now listen to what he says next. He says, as Jesus so aptly put it when he spoke to Peter, what thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Of their own children or of strangers? Peter saith unto him, of strangers. Jesus saith unto him, then are the children free. And that was Matthew 17, verse 25 and 26. And then he finishes by saying that the 501c3 status is what gives the church the freedom to use all its funds to bless its members and reach out to the world rather than supporting the work of the government. And then, of course, she signs off on it. But did you notice what he did in that response? 
he purposely left out the last verse of that chapter, which was key to the response Jesus was giving Peter regarding paying the taxes. After saying all that he did to Peter, Jesus then said to him in the very next verse, which actually ends the chapter, he said, notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea and cast an hook and take up the fish that first cometh up. And when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and thee. And that was Matthew 17, verse 27. Not only did Jesus say pastors should pay the tax so as to not offend, he also showed he will help the pastors get the money to do so by how he sent Peter fishing to get that coin. When Doug Batchelor stated that the 501c3 helped to remove his being in the greater bondage, he was both the leading scripture so as to preach a lie, and he did this to hide his open sin of denying Jesus who also said to keep the church and state separate, as well as to render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. Bachelor actually declared Jesus Christ a liar when he said paying the taxes would place him in greater bondage, even though Jesus just promised to help the pastors pay the tax. The Seventh-day Adventist church now confirms and vindicates the obedient remnant people that follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth, which is outside the apostate Seventh-day Adventist church. For it has been the remnant people who have been preaching truth exactly as prophecy said we will on this and many other truths that are being ignored in the word by these apostate leaders. Using a popular Seventh-day Adventist pastor who is known for his articulate tongue as well as one who comes off as a Bible scholar, Bachelor was purposely used to step up to the task of lying to the people about the 501c3, knowing the lukewarm members in the Seventh-day Adventist church won't question him when he twists the word of the great God of heaven. I mean, after all, they have been sitting firm in the pews all during their admitted apostate condition for decades now. If they didn't leave when the pastors said Allah is God or homosexual marriage is okay, or even keeping Sunday as a Sabbath in the Seventh-day Adventist church being no big deal, then having Doug Batchelor twist just one more verse to hide how they have been exposed as preachers of filthy lucre means they will for the most part stay in the church regardless. And sadly that too was prophesied. This strange response from Doug Batchelor boldly vindicates the obedient remnant people of God who have declared they were in sin regarding the 501c3 for literally decades now. For the Seventh-day Adventist Church to use a twisted Bible passage with a key verse purposely left out to try and cover their tracks proves they now know they have no way out of this mess. Worse yet, their decision to stay in apostasy means they have now grown in rebellion to the point they see no sin in openly lying before the precious flock that they are called the shepherd so as to keep their precious 501c3 contract intact. The fact Pastor Doug Batchelor of the Seventh-day Adventist Church called Jesus Christ a liar regarding paying taxes and then purposely left out a Bible verse that was key to the passage to cover up his sinful actions of having multiple 501c3 contracts with the Second Beast of Revelation confirms that, yes, Doug, the church has become subservient or accountable to the government instead of God. Thank you for watching. God bless.